everybody! I'm Lise. Come on a journey with me and you can see how I see. In touch. Hi everyone! Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can teach your blind and visually impaired students and clients to peel potatoes. A lot of these skills will also work with other vegetables. As I recommend with everything, you need to look at the overall task and look at its subcomponents and make sure your students have all the prerequisite skills to do the overall task. So there might be lessons that have to happen before this to give them the basic skills so that they can put them all together to do this task. All right, there's several different options for peeling potatoes. One option is that you can buy potatoes that are already peeled. They're more expensive that way, but not terribly ridiculous. You can buy them in a can, and you also can buy them in the produce section. They're in like a Ziploc bag. They've got water in them, and that keeps them from browning. If someone has the skills, maybe they're ready to cook their potatoes, but they're still building up to where they would need help peeling them, they could get assistance in the kitchen, maybe peeling the potatoes ahead of time for them. And those could be put in water in a bowl. You could keep them in the fridge uh, as much as a week even. And that way, as long as they're covered with the water, they won't turn brown. So um, even if someone's going to peel them themselves, they may not want to peel potatoes multiple times during the week. If they eat a lot of potatoes, they could uh, maybe they want to just get all the peeling done and they can put them in a bowl. So that's another option. Um, there are brands of potatoes that have thinner skins. So like a new potato has a fairly thin skin. So if someone isn't going to um, feel comfortable or be able to peel the potato, they could maybe use something like that that's got the thinner skin and using a scrubby brush on it would kind of rough up that skin and even remove some of it. And then when it's cooked, it might not, uh, wouldn't change um, how most recipes would turn out, even a mashed potato or something, that would be fine with that thinner skinned potato. So that's another option. And then there's several different techniques that you can use to actually peel the potato. So I have this small potato here um, I've actually already started this technique um, because it takes 15 minutes, but I'll show you what I did up until this part, okay? So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to score um, going around the center or the equator of the potato. I'm cutting a little deeper than you even have to. You really just need to break the skin. Um, it does help if you overlap your cuts. And um, I can feel it with my fingernails that I've gone all the way around. But if someone was like, well, I'm not sure I got it, got it all, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just circling the potato again, all right? And then you would put this in boiling water and you'd cook it for 15 minutes. Now, that's going to cook the potato as well. It's gonna make it fork tender. And, um, but I'll show you how that technique works. I've already had um, these going on the stove for about five minutes, so I'm gonna set my timer for 10. So Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. All right, there she goes, my friend. We call her Amanda when we're not actually talking to her, but um, that is a tool that a lot of people can use. There's other smart devices like that. Google Home is one of them. Um, there are digital timers that talk. People can use the timer on their phone. I like this because it's hands-free. And um, there's a timer on my phone that I, I'm sorry, on my stove. Uh, someone with a low vision could see that. This one is not particularly accessible. Um, again, I like using my friend Amanda, but there's no, I always say there's no um, uh, blind police that are come, gonna come out and say, oh, you didn't do that right. So whichever method for timing works for you. All right, so I've got my uh, potato boiling and I'll show you in the meanwhile, while that's processing, I will show you some other techniques. All right, so I've got a big potato here and um, I have one method that people like using is a potato peeler. 
I have two different styles of peeler. This one, um, you'll notice it's got a good gripping handle. I recommend that. Some of them have just like a little narrow metal handle. Uh, they tend to slip around and they're a little bit hard to, harder to hold onto, so I recommend this bigger grip one. Um, and in this case, the blade runs parallel to the handle. And then I have one that's similar where the blade is perpendicular to the handle. So um, if you were using this one where the blade is perpendicular to it, um, uh, some people are really unsure about holding things in their hand while they're cutting. And um, to be honest, I'm not sure that would be my first go-to with most clients. But um, remember, some of your clients already know how to cook. You're not, some clients you're teaching them how to cook. They've never have had any experience with that. And then others, they know how to cook. Maybe they lost their vision later in life and they're just looking for ways to refine how they cooked using different techniques. So some of that depends on the background and the special awareness and all those things that you would have to assess and decide what you were comfortable with. But with this type of peeler, if you, um, I'm holding the potato in my non-dominant hand, which happens to be my left hand. I have my fingers, you know, of, away from where I'm cutting and I have, I'm starting the blade as at the far end of the potato. Um, you're really probably supposed to hold it this way. I tend to put my index finger up here. So I'm gripping with the rest of my hand on my index finger. It's, that's kind of my eye there. I'm sort of looking at what I'm doing and I pull it all the way back toward me. Now that's where the danger could be. I was fine, but if this was a smaller potato like this one, if you come back like that, now you're kind of bringing the peeler into your hand. So that's where you just have to use um, some good judgment. There's actually an eye here that I can feel. So I'm gonna take the pointy part of this potato and I put my finger on the eye and then put the the blade part just beyond it and push down and rock it back. And I, ha, now I have a blind potato. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, so if I can, if I hadn't set that down to do all that chattering, I, I remember I drew it back here and then I can feel here with my thumb, the wet part, the, the actual skin is dry and feels rougher. And then the smooth wet part is where the um i've cut so i want to line my blade up next to that and then i draw back for the next cut okay so that's that's how this one works you're actually pulling the blade towards you um some folks need the stability most folks need the stability of the cutting board so you could lay the cut you could lay the the potato on the cutting board. This is actually what I would recommend doing. And then if you see, I'm still lining up and I'm coming the length. Now you saw it slid around on the cutting board. So my solution for that would be to take a knife and cut this potato and then I'll have a flat end and I can keep drawing it that way. Um, I'm gonna actually cut it the other, so you would cut it this direction. And um, I would actually use this knife, okay? But I'm gonna show you the um, how this one works. So I'm gonna actually cut my potato the other direction. So I'm gonna cut it, I'm cutting it down the center. Um, I guess what we would call a hamburger direction, not hot dog. All right, and now I have this flat surface, which helps, let me set my knife down. And I can, um, that gives, the potatoes aren't gonna roll around on me like it did. I'm gonna turn my heat down here a little bit. I'm getting just a little threatening of boiling over, okay. All right, I'm also gonna cut the very end of the potato off. So now I've got a flat side on both pieces, all right. So using this type of peeler where the blade runs parallel to the handle, I would line it up and I put my, my non-dominant hand is back here, the potatoes between my blade 
and my hand, my other hand, and I just draw down going toward the cutting board. This is probably the safest method. Now, when you get down to the edge here, sometimes it's hard, so you might need to rock the potato back a little bit and get that little bottom part. Okay, so this would probably be the most um, except it keeps sticking in there, the safest way. Now, I can feel where I have skin and where I don't. Like, I can tell I've got a little strip of skin here. So I'm going to line up and cut that. I have one here. Ideally, you want to overlap your strokes so that you don't end up with those little um, pieces. But the reality is... That doesn't always happen. Now, potatoes are cheap, so if someone cuts away flesh part of the potato, um, I don't want to say it's okay to waste food. I think that it's important to be responsible, of course. But again, potatoes are inexpensive, and if someone isn't quite sure if they got all of it, they can always overlap and, and take off more skin that um, then they need, you know, if you go a little deeper, it's not the end of the world. Now this is getting a little bit dry, so it's a little bit harder to feel. So lots of times, um, I, well, I can tell down here I'm, um, missing. Now I, I could lay it on its side like this to get the, get the end better. All right. Well, what I was going to say is if I'm getting to where it's a little bit hard to tell, I can wet my potato. If I rinse it off, then um, that makes it easier to feel where there's still skin. And I don't know. I think it's good enough. I'm making Zuppa Toscana soup. And um, that's the peeling method. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? You have one minute and 10 seconds. Oh boy, I have one minute and 10 seconds. So, um, now normally I would peel into the sink and then I wouldn't have all this here in my work area. Um, I could have put one of my paper towels down and peeled onto that. Um, it's not really that big of a deal. I can rinse my cutting board off. Just waiting on my timer here and then I'll show you um, another another technique before we do the one we started. So it'd be fun if she went three, two, one, but she doesn't do that. She might, but I don't have her set up that way. Could have used my little scraper. Sometimes when I cut stuff, I'll even throw the peels away as I cut. That's a little back and forth, a lot of, a lot of back and forth. It's really not necessary. All right, I think my timer's about to go. I'm going to go ahead and um, turn my stove off. Now, um, this assumes someone knows how to use their stove safely. And that will be covered in a, a different lesson. Alexa, stop. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid to my pot. I'm angling it where the steam is going back from me so it doesn't come up and get my hand. And then I have a bowl of ice here, which I'm going to add water to. All right, so I've got, now I've got ice water. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, um, these are tongs. And I'm gonna, now see I'm touching my pan with my tongs. My hands are way far away. Um, and that is one technique for being safe with pans. All right, so I've retrieved my potato. I'm gonna bring it across and put it in my ice water. I only had one potato in there. And um, this 
this has to sit for three minutes, so I'm actually going to let it sit there for a second. And um, I'll come back over here and I'll show you my cutting technique, and then we'll go back to the boiled ice bath potato in just a moment. All right, so this is partly peeled because I was using the peeler earlier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the end off. I just like having that flat edge to start with. Um, and um, this is a paring knife. I've mentioned in earlier videos that a sharp knife is always safer than a dull one. Some people are like, oh, it's too sharp. I'm afraid to use it, but it's better than using a dull one that will slip. So I recommend a sharp knife. So um, you can place your knife at the, you know, find the top of your potato and the blade is down. This assumes someone's already been oriented to how to use a knife, like basic skills for a knife. Um, and then I start cutting and then I, I put my fingers, so the knife, the, the potato skin is now between my knife and my fingers. And I can follow the curve of the potato down. Now, that time I cut really deep. So this is why some people don't like this technique because it obviously takes away up more of the potato than a peeler would. But I, um, this is actually my preferred method. All right, so um, now I left kind of a little bit here in between. So I'm just gonna cut that away. Uh, probably looks like I'm throwing this on the floor, but the trash can's right over here. <laughs> I'm not, I don't like garbage on my cutting board. I, I like to get it out of my way. All right, so that was an eye that I could have gouged out, but I just sort of cut, cut it out. Not sort of, I did cut it out. All right. All right, so there's my other option for using a knife to peel it. I think I would want to take this little piece off. I don't usually cut quite this deep and when someone first starts doing this they'll probably be cutting you know pretty far into the potato. This is definitely easier with the bigger potatoes than um, say something this size. I'm going to stick this over here in my water so they don't get yucky. But again if you like this one is the one we already started cutting earlier for the for the boiling process. If you get yourself a flat edge, it's it's much easier just to sort of uh, let it rest on the cutting board, and then you can um, cut like this. All right, so this is how the knife method works. Um, I don't recommend that people cut in their hand. You know, people want to like kind of do it like this, or I just think it's best to have it anchored. If someone has um, limited use of one of their hands, you can have a cutting board that's got a little spiky thing in it. Like a, you could even make one a wooden, wood take a wooden cutting board and put a nail in it, and then you can put the vegetable or the piece of meat or whatever you're cutting down over that nail and that keeps it from sliding around. So that's uh, an option. You can buy them, they're commercially made that way, but you could also construct one of your own. All right, so I'm gonna go back and um, I'm just gonna set these aside. They're not really quite finished, but I'll put them over here on my other cutting board. I'm gonna grab my ice bath. This is very full. So this, uh, for some clients, just transferring things from one counter to, a other, to another, you can probably see how full this bowl is. That would be a skill that you'd have to work up to. A new client, um, just being able to keep things level. And, um, and, and I mean, it could be a client that you've been working with for five years that still has issues with that. Again, it's all, everybody's different. But you would not want to start with something this full. They could have even just gotten the potatoes out over there. All right, so I have my potato, and um, I can feel here's where we scored it earlier, and I just pinch 
down, my fingers running them together. This feels kind of gooey. It's almost like mashed potato right under the skin, but it's just taking that skin right off. All right, so let me rinse this off so you can see it without the, I have a little bit of an eye in there. I probably should have taken that out ahead of time, but I just used my little bit of fingernail there to pull that out of there. All right, I'm gonna rinse this off. And you can see, that I have a potato with no skin. Sorry, I'm, I'm drippy here, hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's my other option. I think you can tell it's peeled. All right, so we have options for using a vegetable peeler, a knife, the boiling, blanching method, or you can buy them pre-peeled, or you can use a brand that has a thin skin, or you can seek sighted assistance, or not even necessarily sighted assistance, could be another person who's blind, but you could get assistance with that step if needed, or you can cook with the peel, that's the healthy part anyway. So I hope this helps. I'll see you next time, keep cooking. Hey everyone, thanks for coming by to check out my video. If you liked it, go ahead and click the like button and you might want to subscribe to my channel and you can ring the bell so you get a notification when the next video comes out. If you need to get in touch with me, maybe you want to make a request or you want to check on booking for an event, you can shoot me an email. It's lease, L-I-S, sings for you. And the four is a word, not a number, at gmail.com. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye!